we are rising. God, make sure that you register. So once again, my name is Apostle Dominic Osei, uh, and I want you to meet me over there. God has a word for you, and God will do something new in your life. God bless you, and I'll see you. Kingdom men arise, arise, we are rising. I'm so excited for good news because this year we are coming to the DMV. We are gathering for the second gathering, number two. We have already done the first at Stanford, Connecticut, but this year the Lord has given us a, a better vision to take it all over. And so the next one will be in America. Uh, I would like for you to gather. <laughs> La pranta la braga da da bazo, tala braga da da bazo, tala ma. La pranta la braga da bazo, braga da da bazo, tala braga da da bazo, tala braga da da bazo. Ika tala pranta la braga da da bazo, pranta la ma kapala ga da bazo, tala braga da bazo. Ma da pranta tala braga kapala bazo, tala braga da da bazo, tala ma. La pandi a kapala bazo, tala braga da da bazo, tala ma kapaha. Ika tala pranta la braga da da bazo, tala braga da da bazo, tala braga da da bazo. Rapanta la braga pata la mazo tala braga pepe la bazo tala braga paha Rapanta la braga pata la tala braga da da bazo tala braga pata la braga da bazo tala Rapanta la braga da da bazo tala braga da da bazo braga pala da da bazo tala braga da da bazo braga da da bazo pamia kata la branta la braga da da bazo tala mazo tala Rapanta la braga da da bazo tala la braga da da bazo Yes Lord la branta la braga da da bazo tala bra Rega da da bazo branta la mazeka da la braga pantu la bazeta. Rega da da bazo pelega da braga da da bazo ta la braga palia. Rego da pelega da tu a branta la braga penta. Rega da da bazo ta la braga pelega da braga penta la baha. Rega da da bazo pelega da braga pepe pepe he. Rapa pa ba 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 zeta la braga da la baha. Zela braga ba ba ta la braga zeta la brantu la la zepe. Raka ta la braga pa 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 pa. Rapa 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 r
understanding now be in our presence, oh God. Cover this life in the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome everybody to Wednesday's Bible studies. Um, on behalf of Apostle Dominic and Prophetess Leslie, we welcome you. Um, I know you have not seen us for quite some time because of the, the meteor fast, but we are back. Tell somebody we are back. We are type, back. Type in the comments that we are back. Amen. Amen. So please go ahead and evangelize by sharing this live. Um, share the links in your groups. Um, share the links with your friends, family, so we can get this road going, this show going. Amen. Once again, God bless you. On behalf of Apostle Dominic and Prophetess Leslie, we welcome you to Wednesday's Bible Studies. Amen. Amen. But also, let's make sure we have something to write with. Amen. Amen. Um, before we get into tonight's teaching, um, please go ahead. Um, we made it last Sunday um, before Bible Studies. Please, if you can, we encourage you to subscribe to the channel of the Kingdom Full Tabernacle. Um, you, you, you have maybe have been seeing some of the bots writing appropriate things. Um, so moving forward, the only way you can comment is when you subscribe to the YouTube channel, please. So please take about five seconds to go, go and do so. Amen. 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 Um, we This month we've been talking and teaching about evangelism. Evangelism. What is evangelism? What else? Um, what what the expectations are, et cetera. So tonight we're just, as we're closing out this, this month, you know, we'll be entering into the month of July very soon. We're just going to do a general recap of what we've learned and what we've been um, teaching over these last couple of weeks. Amen? Amen. 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 So quickly, um, can somebody go to Ephesians 4, verse 11, for, uh, 11, please, New King James Version. Ephesians 4. Yes, please, 11 to 16, please. Ephesians 4, 11 to 16, King James Version. And he gave some apostles and some prophets mm. and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, mm. till we all come in unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, Onto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, mm. that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, mm. by the slate of man, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking truth and love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it the increase of the body onto the edifying of itself in love. Amen. God Amen. bless you. Amen. So as we're talking about evangelism, we see here quickly in verse 11, it says, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. We see here some, some, it didn't say all, right? So what does that mean? What is the scripture telling us? When when we keep seeing repetition here, he gave some. He gave some. What what are your thoughts on that? Everybody has a different gift to make that one body whole. Mm. Amen. I like Amen. that. God bless you. Anybody else? He gave some apostles and some prophets. Amen. Amen. Also, each office is equally valuable. Mm hmm. Um, although they rank differently in authority, the evangelist is just as important as the prophet. Mm. Um, so we should definitely take the topic of evangelism just as serious as if we were talking about the office of a prophet or the office of the pastor. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. So we see here it says some, some. Now what about... Everyone has been called to evangelize, and we talked about the different offices. That's why I believe we see the word. Some were called into those offices, right, to govern those offices, but some were called to offices, right? It didn't say everybody, right? Just because, you know, apostle prophet is always saying, just because you can prophet not necessarily make you a prophet, right? So you may have the gift in of a, like, you're able to prophesy, but it does not make you a prophet. We see that in the story of Saul. Saul joined the company of prophets, and he started prophesying. Did I make Saul a prophet? No. So understanding that some were called to these offices, but everybody in terms of evangelism 
we've been called to evangelize. Amen? You know, for example, we see that some uh, major men and women of God who were, uh, were called into the office of evangelists. We see the late Billy Graham, right? He was, a, he, was a, he was called into that office. Amen? And verse 12 says, for the equipping of the saints of the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So these offices were given to us to equip us for the work of ministry. Amen. So we're just breaking down each office before we go um, deeper here. And verse 13, it says, till we all come to the unity and the faith and the acknowledge of the Son of God. So these offices ought to lead us to the knowledge of Christ. So if someone's in that office that is not teaching us or showing us the way of Christ, guess what? They're in error. Amen? So if an evangelist who operates in that office is not showing us Christ, then that person is walking in error. So every evangelist, even when we're, we're going out to evangelize, it must point to Christ. And we'll talk about that here shortly. Amen? And it says, till we all come, okay, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Watch this, verse 14. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craft, craft, craftiness of deceitful plotting. Amen. What are your thoughts about that? When it comes to evangelizing, evangelism, we see it says that we should not, no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. What is that, how, what is that, how does that resonate with you? Um, well, it takes me back to the, um, you know, the scripture, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. So um, without the knowledge that, you know, these apostles, these teachers, these pastors are giving us, we'll be drawn to every doctrine, even if it's not from or aligned with Christ, mm -hmm. which will take us out of alignment in general. Amen. Amen. I was going to say that uh, people's opinion signifies ways. And um, he talks about. Uh, blown away here and there by the wind of teaching by cunning and craftiness. Mm. So that means that if it's not a, the word of God or if it's not a truth, you know, that is in this case the word of God, then it means everything else, you know, in, indicates the ways, indicates the craftiness, the cunningness of people, mm. indicates or stands for their opinion or their own ideologies Amen. Uh, in that sense. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Anybody else? Amen. You know, the dispensation we live in, it's, there's a lot of fluffiness messages going on that has no, no identity of Christ in the messages. So if someone goes and evangelizes, oh, look at what, and we'll talk, I'll ask you guys a question shortly about uh, um, evangelism and also um, testimony. Like, the, are they the same? Are they similar? We're going to hear very shortly. Because a lot of times when you hear people say, oh, I'm going to evangelize, they're just sharing their story. And there's no Christ factor in the story. Right. And we'll, we'll talk about it here shortly. But in verse 16 says, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by which every joint supplies, according to the effective work by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So all these offices should have the body of Christ grow. Amen. And then we're going to break it down. Um, apostles build and govern all that concerns God's kingdom. And prophets speak the mind of God to his church. Pastors tend and take care of God's flock. Teachers explain the word of God by revelation given by God. And what do you think evangelists do? Anybody? What is the work of the evangelist? Spread the good news. Mm -hmm. we, they share. I should say we because we're all commanded to. Amen. We share the good news. And what is that good news? If somebody can break it down, give us a synopsis. What is that good news? If I'm walking up to I want to say, what is it? Uh, so I believe that the good news is um, moving from darkness into light. Mm -hmm. uh, because if one is going to evangelize, it's not just about the, the, the good news we are sharing is the fact that we have been brought from darkness into light. And what we are seeing in that light and what we are enjoying then it becomes our responsibility to now go and take others from that darkness and bring them into the light that we are now enjoying. Amen. 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 I like that. We were all in darkness, and you, you know, the Lord sought you out. He brought you out of, into light, and then you're going back to bring more people. Amen? So let's quickly go to Matthew 28, verse 19. Can I read New King James Version? Question, yes, please. I have a question. Yes, uh, please. If you read... 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, until we all reach the unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask, is one office enough to bring a soul to the knowledge of Christ or all combined? Uh, Amen. God bless you. That's a very good question. Anybody? If I respond. What are your thoughts? That's a very good question. I believe one soul is enough to bring somebody into the Christ, but it takes all, I mean, one office is enough to bring somebody into the body of Christ, but it takes uh, more than one office to keep them there. Mm. So we're sp you're speaking of nourishing the person. Nourishing Great. the person, like yeah. That. Okay. So anybody else? Amen. So that's a very good question, um, Brother David. So I believe it says that all the, all the officers should work together to build the body, right? One office, for example, and, and I love how our, the HR for the evangelist ministry um, talked about this. The evangelists, they go out and bring the souls in, right? Let's say you go out and evangelize. You find somebody, you know, and you bring them into the church. Now, it doesn't end there. The evangelist, you know, gives materials to, to, to help the person grow. Now, the pastor steps in. The pastor tends. The pastor um, grooms by the word of God. The pastor teaches by the word of God, right? The pastor take, watches over the souls of that person until you see the spiritual growth. Now, it would be amazing that I believe that, you know, all churches should have all these fivefold ministries in there, right, for it to be functioned uh, appropriately. But let's say, you know, I remember Apostle said this a um, while ago. Um, if, if there's not, if one of the offices is not there, you know, you pray. As a man of God, you pray for the Lord to send you one of those offices to come in. Right, so the apostle who is supposed to go out and govern and you know build established churches, he cannot be relieved per se, and now focus on his man on in that season, right? So it'll be amazing for the church to have all those ministries in that church, right? So that way, every person where it says this, it says here, so um, which verse were you? Verse 16 says, from the whole body joint and knit together by which every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share. So now when a church has all this, guess what? Its work is, is, is flowing beautifully. Members are growing. Members are, are, are learning. Members are learning about the things of God. They're growing. They're going out there and they're doing the work of God. Right? But let's say if you're in a ministry that doesn't have all, you pray. Lord, please send a teacher. Lord, please send a prophet. Lord, please send this person because this work needs to be completed. Amen? Amen. So in the meantime, I'll encourage you, know, you pray. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Now, uh, Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, please. New King James. Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, New King James Version. Mm -hmm. Go, therefore, and make fools of all the nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. 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 So a Apostle said something on Sunday, and I love the, how he, ex he broke it down and said the truth will make you free versus set you free. So we're going to apply that same um, concept here. It says, therefore, go and make disciples. Right? When you make a disciple... This is where the, the, all the bodies, come, the offices come together. You're making a disciple. The pastor is tending. The pastor is, is, is watching over the soul of that person. Now you're making a disciple, right? Now you're grooming the person in the word of God. You're teaching the person the word of God. You're making sure the person is spiritually growing in areas of which God has called them to grow, right? So you, that's how you make a disciple. We don't just go out and evangelize just in the, in the sake of, oh, I did my part, fulfill righteousness. No. The way a ministry, excuse me, a church should operate is that these ministries, these offices should be in there so that way it flows effectively. Amen? Amen. So it says, therefore, and make disciples. Don't just go on to say, oh, I received good news. I want to share it with you. And I turn my back and I don't see you forever again. The point of evangelism is making sure you bring the person into the house of God and you make sure that they're taken care of spiritually. And sometimes, too, physically in terms of, like, resources. They need resources, yeah. So that way you see the, the whole growth of that person. That's how you know effectively your, your ministry has, has um, effectively evangelized, when you see the spiritual growth of that person. Amen? 
It says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So now we see that evangelism is a command from God, from Jesus. That when you're a believer, he's expecting you to go make, you know, Christianity is, is duplicate. You duplicate what God has given you. If he says, I've made, let, let us make man in our own, own image and likeness, he expects us to carry that same mandate when we're going out to, to share the good news, right? To make disciples. And if you know you're not called, you know, if you're, if you're shy, whatever, speak the word of God and bring, it to, bring it to the person to the house of God. That's why there's HOMs there. That's why there's leaders in the church. Amen? So that way your evangelism is not ineffective and you just lose a soul. Amen? Now, I'm going to read this very quickly. The good news explained. The good news is, is that one, that the one and only God who's holy made us in his image to know him. But we sinned and cut ourselves off from him. And in his great love, God became a man in Jesus, lived a perfect life, and died on the cross, thus fulfilling the law himself and taking on himself the punishment for the sins of all those who, have, who, would, have, who, who would ever turn and trust in him. He rose again from the dead, showing that God accepted Christ's sacrifice, that God's wrath against us had been exhausted. He now calls us to repent of our sins and to trust in Christ alone for our forgiveness. If we repent of our sins and in Christ, we are born again into a new life, an eternal life with God. This is called a new birth. Amen? So now, question? Yes, please. Um, I just wanted to know what are the bound if there are any boundaries. What are the boundaries when bringing a soul to Christ? Like they come in, you know, that you share the good news with them. They accept Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and then they start backsliding. Then they come back to the church, like, and then there's just this repetitive cycle. Maybe it doesn't continue for like a year, but mm -hmm. at what point does the person decide to keep reaching out or to keep bringing them back into Christ? Like, w you know, what are the boundaries? That's a good question. Anybody want to answer that? What are your thoughts on that? Yes, please. Um, the first thing I think of is 1 Corinthians 3, 6, which says, I have planted Apollos watered, but God give, gave the increase. Um, so what you're saying is literally what happens most of the time. You preach to someone or you evangelized. They gave their life to Christ. They came to church a few times, but then they stopped coming for whatever the reason may have been. I think this is where it's like you did your part. Mm -hmm. Now God has to take over um, because it could become draining to try to to try to hunt them down constantly to try to pull them to come back. Mm -hmm. um, but if you know you've done everything you can do, you can actually release them, mm -hmm. and and the Lord will be against you. He won't judge you that you gave up on the soul when you know you've done everything you can do to what to plant a seed right in them and to water them as much as you can. Now you're dependent on God to give the increase. Amen. Amen. I like that. God bless you. Yes. Yeah, so I, I agree with Sister Lucy a lot. But then I think that one of the things that we have to be cautious about as believers is um, that's our mandate, number one. And so if it's our core mandate or our core responsibility as believers to evangelize and bring people from darkness into light, then we have to be thinking about the fact that we want to keep them in church. Because what most people do is that since we are saying um, it's our responsibility to evangelize, what we'll do is that we'll go out there, bring them to church, and we see them backsliding one or two, and then we say, oh, I'm out, I'm done. Mm -hmm. But then if it becomes our responsibility, because if, if I see my daughter falling down i will not say okay because she fell one or two times i'm gonna leave her on the floor so i think that we that we are in christ we have to make it an effort and that's why when we bring them to church there should be a system in place or we should we should have we should have um a system that can hold them so much that they will not want to go back even if they go back there's a system that can go and then bring them that doesn't put a burden on the person because there are certain people who can talk to a soul but cannot maintain the soul so I believe that at the end of the day, their system has to be put in place for us to be able to maintain these souls so that they don't go back. Even if they go back, let's remember, there's a system there yeah. that is going to bring them back to church. I believe that that will also help. Amen. I love that. God bless you. Yes. Man. Um, no, I agree with both Sister Lucy and Brother Kenny. But, um, you know, uh, pertaining to what uh, Sister Lucy said, like, you know, I feel like when you plant the seed, 
Um, everything that Kenny said is aligned to that, you know, making sure that you maintain, making sure that they stay. But it's only so much that I believe that it's only so much that do, you know, even pertaining to our own personal testimonies as well. But I remember, I think it's you that said something that when you when you plant the seed, seeds grow. So it's not right then and there where the seed will actually grow. So I feel like once you do your job of at least planting the seed, planting the seed doesn't just take one day. But once it takes that timeline of actually planting the seed and making sure that it's, you know, fully watered by apostle, whoever the case may be, just let the seed grow. Wherever they go, they'll always come back just because you planted the seed. So, yeah. Amen. God bless you. Anybody else? Um, I definitely agree with, with every, what everybody's saying. Um, going back to, you know, Sister Lucy's uh, comment, you know, it, it's God that gives the increase, right? Apollos and, and Paul, they do the watering and planting, right? So now, with I love that you said that because especially in our dispensation, we are prone to have systems for everything, especially in the church, right? So having, you know, an outreach part of the evangelism ministry, someone who does the outreach, making sure, hey, I know, remember... <laughs> I had a, I joined a church a while ago, and they kept calling me. They kept calling me like, ah, these people are very <laughs> persistent. But I saw why they kept doing it, right? So having a system in place, especially in our dispensation, is very, very important. Because that person, who knows, he, he or she might be dealing with an orphan spirit. If you don't reach out, guess what? They're going to think, okay, they, they just spoke to me once, and that's it. So if there's a system set in place where the men is calling, um, checking on you, hey, brother, I haven't seen you in a while. You know, hope everything's going well, you know. And that person's like, wow, this church really does care for me. Let me visit next week. So you never know. We, yeah, we don't want to get to a place where we're assuming, like, well, I've given the person three times. I've called them three times. They didn't pick up. Let me just leave it and go. Because that's one, th that's one thing the enemy wants, right? So we have that mindset. We do need to have systems in place. But ultimately, that gives the increase. So which I want to go back to the, I want to go to the, um, the definition of evangelism. It says here, according to Merriam-Webster um, Dictionary, evangelism is the winning or revival of personal commitments to Christ. Amen? So it goes back to personal commitments. Now, when you effectively evangelize and you really sit down and you talk to that person and you take them through the Roman roads to salvation, and they're like, they have having understanding, right? They're like, wow. And they, you know, they say this, they pray of salvation right then and there. The follow-up is very, very necessary. You have to have a follow-up with them, Right? But at the end of the day, yes, there's some responsibility on that person as well. Does that person understand the, the sin that they've, they've been living in? Does that person understand that, wow, Christ still loved me and pulled me out of darkness, right? Because when you have an effective evangelism, like the fire, the fire of God comes on that person. And like their life just, like they, they're the one who's running to church, coming. You don't have to tell them. But we understand not everybody is, is that, that way. Their experience is that way. So it's good to have a system in place. And it's good to know that God is the one that gives the increase. But if we're the one evangelizing, we shouldn't be like, well, I reached out to this person three times. They're, they're not returning my call. Let me give up. That would not be the right mindset, per se. But we have to end that. Not every person you go to evangelize, will, will, it'll be the same way. Right? And I think when we prepare ourselves as someone who's going out to minister, to evangelize, that <laughs> person A is not the same per per person B. It's not a cookie-cutter message, per se, if that makes sense. Amen? Amen. Anybody else want to add anything to that? Amen. All right. So the good news, the gospel means good news. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ needs to cover three major things. The first one is why do we need to be saved? When you're talking to somebody, having them understand the reason why you're having this conversation, first of all, right? This is after, by God's grace, you've broken barriers, awkward conversations. Um, I know I, I have that, but by God's grace, the Holy Spirit takes over. Amen? You know, having the person understand why speaks of purpose. When you have the person understand the reason why you're having this conversation, the reason why Christ died for them, guess what? You've broken the mental barrier that, that has, has been, you know, in their mind for many, many years. My brother, my, my sister, this is why you need Jesus. This is why you need Jesus. And let's go to Romans 3.23, please. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. My brother, my sister, truth be told, myself, we all have fallen short of God's glory. We've sinned. So when you're able to answer the person, 
they'll, they'll understand, this is why I need Jesus. Because we all sin. We all fell short of God's glory. Amen? Amen? And that person will know, okay, okay, you're going somewhere. So that is why we need to be saved. Let's go to Romans 6.23, please. Romans 6.23. Mm-hmm. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, you know, Brother Elijah, why do I need to be saved? Why are you telling me about Jesus? Because, brother, sister, if you don't give your life to Christ, your payment is death. But there's an ulterior option here. When you give your life to Christ, you have eternal life. And now the person knows why why they should give their life to Christ. Amen. Because one separated us from God. So I've sinned. And then, but there's a, there's a way out. So when that person understands the why, it propels them. Okay, this is why I need to do this. Amen? The next one is how Jesus can save us. Now we figure out the why. Now how so? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.15, please. 2 Corinthians 5.15. Mm-hmm. And he died for all. That those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Amen. Amen. So my brother, my sister, Jesus died for you in your sin. And guess what? He rose up on the third day. And the father accepted his sacrifice. That is how you're going to be made whole today. Like you don't say tomorrow. These are some of the way when you're speaking to somebody today. Don't be like, like don't, don't be creepy about it. Like, be cool, calm, and collected. This is why Jesus wants to save you today. It shows them how. Okay, you telling me that this, this God can save me. Like, this person is like, this God can save me, et cetera, et cetera. How can he do so? He died on the cross for you, and he wants to save you today. But first, you have to accept him. Amen? Amen. And then let's go to John 3.16. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. This scripture says it. everything. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus. Jesus died for you, my brother, my sister, and he wants to save you. All you have to do is say yes today, right now. Right now. So that way you can partake of last in life. There's a solution. Amen? Amen. And what, this, the third thing is what must we do to be saved? Let's go to Romans 10, verse 9. Please. Romans 10, verse 9 to 10. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. And wealth, confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Amen. So with our mouth and our hearts, we actually have that decision to choose life and death. That's what scripture says. The power of death is in, in our tongue. Life or death is in our tongue. So we really have the, per, per this scripture, we have the, the, the authority to choose life or death. Jesus already died on the cross. But for us to come in alignment with that cross, um, him dying on the cross, we must speak it. We must repent. Father, I am a sinner. Forgive me. I don't know how this journey is going to go, but forgive me because I want to partake of your eternal. You sent your son to die for me, and I thank you for that. And I repent, and I believe in my heart that, yes, your son Jesus did die on the cross for me, even though I've never met him. But I believe. But I believe. Amen? Now, uh, the next part is the Roman road to salvation. These scriptures we just um, talked about here um, highlights that. Amen? Amen. The first one is Roman 3.23 where it says, For we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So explaining the why, the how, and what you need to do. Amen? Amen. So I'm just going to read out the scriptures, then we're going to go into more teaching here. Romans 3.23, For we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us 
in this while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 10 verse 9. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen? So you confess, you believe, you'll be saved. Amen. And the last one is Romans 10 verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Amen. So that is the Roman road to salvation. Now, let's go into more. Amen. So the first one is evangelism is not conditional to circumstances. What are your thoughts on that? Evangelism is not conditional to circumstances. What does this statement resonate? How does it resonate with you? Amen. Amen. When you think of a circumstance, you think of where in life you are. So I'm thinking it doesn't matter your location, your age, whether you're wealthy, you're poor, whether you're single, married. It doesn't matter what circ what where you are in life. Christ is available for you. You are not too good or too bad. You have not gone too deep in sin to have to have received. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Now, earlier we talked about, I was going to ask a question, you know, how does testimony and evangelism, first of all, do they go, do you think they go hand in hand? I was gonna why, why or why not? Yes, please. I think that um, when it comes to evangelism and testimonies, um, testimony is very relevant to evangelism. Only because whenever you're talking to someone to win the person over, you're, you're not just going with words, but you're going with receipts. Mm. And so your receipts are the testimonies in that case um, of what God has done for you. A lot of the time, we go out to evangelize, but then the people look at us and they're like, you don't even look like what you're talking about. My God. So it becomes so difficult for them to even receive what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, we all look at our pastor and prophetess and we, we can, you know, a lot of the time, a lot of people that have come to KFT mm -hmm. and have even got to Christ, it's not because of what they said, but just by looking at them, mm -hmm. that, wow, this is what God can do with prophetess and, and apostle, then it means that there's hope for me as well. Amen. So evidence is the most powerful, um, is the most powerful whenever you, when it comes to evangelism. Mm -hmm. And so that is why uh, ev evangelism and testimonies um, you know, it's very important to each other. Amen. I love that. Anybody else? I guess also how you deliver um, when you're um, testifying as well. An apostle always speaks about that. Um, even when you're prophesying, somebody could prophesy but, but not say, you know, the Lord said so. Mm. And it's the same, you know, when you're evangelizing as well. You always want to um, attest it to what God has done for you and how he's done it as well. So it also comes across with you know, how you deliver that message as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. God bless you. So would you say that they both work hand in hand together? Evangelism and testimony. Yes. Okay. I like that. Um, so event testimony doesn't sur sur you know, surpass evangelism. Amen. Let's quickly go to Acts 23, please. Yes, please. And let's start from verse 1. I like this NLT version, please. So we're going to see here Paul, how he craftily used evangelism and um, testimony at the same time. Amen? Amen. Acts 23. Verse 1. NLT, please. NLT. Gazing intently at the high council, Paul began, Brothers, I have always lived before God with a clear conscience. Instantly, Ananias, the high priest, commanded those close to Paul to slap him on the mouth. <laughs> But Paul said to him, God will slap you, you corrupt hypocrite. What kind of judge are you to break the law yourself by ordering me struck like that? Those standing near Paul said to him, do you dare assault God's high priest? Mm. I'm sorry, brothers. I didn't realize he was the high priest, Paul replied. For the scriptures say you must not speak evil of any of your rulers. Paul realized that some members of the high council were... Sadducees and some were Pharisees so he shouted brothers I am a Pharisee 
as were my ancestors. And I am on trial because my hope is in the resurrection of the dead. Amen. Let's Amen. Stop, let's stop right there. Amen. Amen. So we see here, I just love Apostle Paul. <laughs> Amen. Based on what we just talked about, evangelism and, uh, and te um, testimony, that story, tie this story into what we just talked about. Where do you see this occurring? Yes, please. Yes, please. Where do you see this occurring? Test, sharing the testimony and evangelize at the same time. In this case study. So it's interesting because um, Paul literally does something that is wrong. But at the same time, he admits it right then and there that, hey, I, I'm sorry, I didn't know that what I did was wrong. So um, in, in the, the scripture says, um, in verse 3, it says, Then Paul said, um, sorry, verse 4 says, um, it says, You said that to judge me according to the law, yet you yourself violate the law by commanding um, that I, I be struck. Um, so basically, Paul is just rec admitting the fact that, you know, I was wrong because of what I said. And I think that, you know, that is a good example of humility. Uh, of, you know, a lot of time when people see that, when someone takes responsibility for their action, it, mm -hmm. it speaks a lot. So. That is just a little bit of it. Amen. God bless you. So that's a very good point. But Leon, talking about evangel evangelism and um, using the testimony, um, there's something else I'm looking at here. Anybody? Amen. 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 Um, so verse 6, it says, Paul realized that some members of the high council were Sadducees and some were Pharisees. So he shouted, but I am a Pharisee, as were my ancestors. Mm. So Paul is basically saying he himself, he is a Pharisee, but now he has fully surrendered to the authority of Christ and has become an apostle. Mm. And, and the people who put him on trial are Sadducees and Pharisees. Mm -hmm. So he's basically saying, I used to be those accusing me now, child, that used to be me. Mm. I used to be an accuser of Christians. So he's saying that if the law can bring me from a place of accusing Christians, accusing Christians, to now a sold-out believer of the gospel of Jesus Christ, a sold-out apostle, that is him even trying to prick the heart of the people who, who put him on trial. He's trying to convince them that even what you're doing, cry, like, you don't even have to do what you're doing. You yourself can give your life to Christ and be sold out for him just like I am sold out. It's so interesting that a man who's on trial about to die is going down evangelizing. And he's really showing, like, evangelism is doing, doing the work of God for the sake of convenience. But even to the point of death, even to the point of, you know what, if this is my last time breathing, I'm going to give it one last go. Why? All for the sake of the kingdom, like we said earlier, right? All for the sake of pulling these Pharisees out of the darkness and bringing them into the true light of Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Anybody else? Amen. Uh, yeah, definitely verse 6. Um, you know, sometimes we try, a lot of times when we're talking about evangelists, it's, we paint a pretty picture. But truth be told, there are evangelists who have lost their lives. In other, you know, third world countries, they go out there, they evangelize it for the gospel. It's a mission, they're mission focused, right? So when you are in this field, when all of us really called to evangelize, like truly, you could potentially lose your life. And we pray it doesn't happen, but it's part of the world then, right? Because if you, if, if the Lord tells you to go to one of these countries in the Eastern world where Christianity is not accepted, like if they catch you with the Bible, they'll kill you, behead you. Like, you have to make that commitment, right? So evangelism is not just a pretty thing. Oh, this person, I, I talked to this person, they gave their life, and I go by my way. Some people have lost their very lives doing this for the sake of the gospel. Amen? Amen. The apostles, they went out, they lost their lives sharing the gospel. Like, we talked about here, Apostle Paul, even in trial, he's still talking about Christ. Whereas he says, Paul then realized Paul then discerned. So as evangelist on Sunday, we talked about the different people you meet, right? Paul then discerned some members of the high councils were Sadducees and some were Pharisees. So he then got his spiritual inclination like, oh, this is a perfect moment for me to share the gospel. Wow. 
even though the situation looks negative. So negative situations can be a great way to invoke light. The light of Christ. Exactly. Right? So it was not just a thing that's pretty where we try to do. No, some people truly go for this. Amen? And he says, brothers, I am a Pharisee, as were my ancestors. He was saying, look, I was one of you. But look at me now. I'm bold enough. I was bold in the world, but I'm still bold enough to declare about when he says, and I am on trial because of my hope is in, in the resurrection of the dead. He's talking about Jesus. Even he could have got killed here, but the Lord spared him as you, when you keep reading down. So even in situations, God can still pull you out as evangelist. I've heard stories of missionaries when they've gone abroad and literally bullets have escaped them. But for sharing the Bible, there's a supernatural thing that occurs with when, when you're to do God's work. Angels go with you. Amen? Amen? So evangelism is not conditional to circumstances. And we see that in the life of Paul in Philemon 1, 8, all the way down. Paul was in prison. He still was evangelizing. He saved uh, Philemon's slave. And I encourage you to read, read um, that, 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 that um, book. Amen? Amen? Still, he was... Actually, let's go there. Let's quickly go to Philemon 1, verse 8, please. Philemon 1, verse 8. Can we get the New King James Version for that, please? New King James Version. Therefore, though I might be very bold in Christ to command you what is fitting, mm. yet for love's sake I rather appeal to you, being such a one as Paul, the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ, mm. I appeal to you for my son, Onis Onesimus, whom I have begotten while in my chains, who once was unprofitable to you, but now is profitable to you and to me. Amen. 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 So we see here Paul pleading for Onesimus. Onesimus ran away from his master, Philemon. And Paul, being friends with Philemon, wrote on behalf of, uh, of Onesimus, saying, please, take him back. But while I was in my chain, while I was in prison, he came to visit me, and I shared the gospel with him. And therefore, now he's one of us. He's a brother in Christ. So please receive him. So even in prison, Paul was still sharing the good news. <laughs> now, this man, Paul, even at his lowest po points, he was still sharing because he was sold out to share the gospel. Once he received that encounter, so mind you, if when you, you, you evangelize to somebody, right? Uh, what's his name? The, the late man of God evangelist, um, Ryan Abunke, he shared his story where um, some man of God evangelist came to his town, if I'm correctly. And because of what that man of God told him about Jesus, he, he, he um, gave his life to Christ. Now, because of what that man of God did, this one man, he was able to, uh, um, his ministry was able to win over like 20 million souls or something like that. So you never know who you are evangelizing to. That one person can, say, can, can, can be used to save 20 million souls. So let's not get in this mindset of, oh, I have to be comfortable for me to go out and evangelize. We're all given the opportunity, even at work. If the Holy Spirit creates a moment for you to evangelize to somebody, trust me, he will make a way for you and that person just to talk. Amen? Amen? The next one is the gospel is made available for everyone everywhere. But now let's, let's, let's add something to that, that statement here. I talked to a man of God earlier, and he said that the gospel is, is made everywhere. But, for example, like these Eastern countries, these Muslim countries, it takes an evangelist on a mission to, to risk their lives to go bring the gospel into those areas. Because if they're, if they're caught, even with a, a, a scripture, a Bible, whether you're a U.S. citizen or not, that's the scary part. They don't see your nationality anymore. They see you as a Christian. So as a believer, yes, we're all mandated to do so. We're all mandated to share the gospel. Right? Right? So the gospel is made available for everyone everywhere. But the dispensation we're in, someone who can't get to the gospel, so it takes an evangelist. It takes the people of God to go share the gospel, the good news. 
sometimes at their risk of their own lives. Amen? Any questions, please? Online? Let me see our virtual family here. Amen. The next point is evangelism should always point us back to Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us. Amen. So if someone comes to you and evangelize and you don't hear one bit of Jesus at all. <laughs> Amen. Then you, you, should, you should, yeah, just turn your back and go away. Because Every effective evangelism should always point us to Christ and what he did on the cross. Billy Graham, his message never changed for over 70 years in ministry. His message was always the cross. Always the cross. Whether he preached the same message or not, he, he stuck by it. It always brought people, introduced people to the cross. Jesus love you. Yeah, you're a sinner, but he saved you. He died for you. That was his message for 70 plus years. Amen. Evangelism is an avenue for the power of God to be made manifest. Amen? Let's quickly go to 15, verse 18 and 19, please. And let's take that NLT for this. Romans 15. Romans 15, verse 18 to 19. Yes, please. Said the NLT version. Yes, please. Yet I dare not boast about anything except what Christ has done through me. Bringing the Gentiles to God by my message and by the way I worked among them. They were convinced by the power of miraculous signs and wonders by the power of God's spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, in this way, I have fully presented the good news of Christ from Jerusalem all the way to Lyricum. Amen. 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 That last part that I have fully presented the good news. Of Christ from Jerusalem all the way to Elysium. Amen. That's that's such a beautiful statement. So that tells you there's a way that you present the good news. There's a video that I saw on IG like this, it was like in one of these um, West African countries. The guy was literally <laughs> his anakazo was very anakazo y. <laughs> like he wanted to beat up the person to receive Jesus. Amen. Amen. But Paul says, I have fully presented the good news. And how do you present it? Paul tells us here. Through the power of God's spirit. So when we're going out there, stack up in prayer. Pray. Know the word. Amen. Amen. Because as evangelists, when you, a lot of these men and women of God who, you know, who walked in the, those offices, they carry power. The power of God. Because when you go out there, if, if you meet someone who's crippled, they, but they don't know Christ, and you don't carry the power of God, how are they supposed to believe that Jesus is real? So that's where, we're, where the apostles, everywhere they went, they carry the power, the presence of God. And Paul is saying, I have fully, one, you bring the knowledge of Christ to them. The other half is the power of Christ. Prophet Elijah, when, when he was doing ministry, he walked around and said, asking the people, what, what would you like for me to do, do for you? What would you like for me to do for you? So you carry the presence, the power of God. Now, let me make this clear. When you're part of a ministry, you don't, you don't go out of order. There's a ministry for that. There's an atrium for that. And the man and woman of God must be aware of it. So don't go out there laying hands on if you have not been released to do so. Don't go out there laying hands if you've not been released to do so. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because if you go out there, you go lay hands, do things by yourself without, yeah, you'll get attacked. And then you come back, putting pressure on apostle and prophetess, like, who sent you? Just go t t share the word and then go with a group of people. Especially when you're being intentional, like I know, I believe we have um, evangelism day coming up very soon by God's grace. Go with a group of people, because nowadays the world we li the dispensation we're in, it's very scary, right? So you always want to make sure you have a witness with you. 
So that way, if you know, let's say you're talking to somebody and someone out of, and you have a hot temper, you need somebody who's cool, calm, collected. That's effective evangelism. Paul said, I have fully presented the good news of the Christ, good news of Christ to Jerusalem all the way to Elysium. But by through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Any, any last questions before we wrap up? <laughs> Amen. God bless you all. Let us say a quick prayer and um, share some few announcements. Well, first, say the announcements. Amen. Starting this Friday, June 24th, we have Ark of Men. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Led by our very old Papa, Apostle Dominic Osei. We have uh, a wonderful man of God coming to the DMV. We will be DMV, by the way. Um, in our branch in the DMV to just celebrate what God is doing in this ministry and through Ark of Ben. Amen. Amen. So it's going to be an amazing time. So please invite your grandfather, your father, your uncle, your friend, um, and register at KFT Church. Now, now, now. Uh, we'll be there Friday all the way to Saturday and coming back to the headquarters Sunday. For Sunday. It's going to be an amazing, amazing time. So please, please, please. Register if you're on the tri-state area. Do not miss this, please. Do not miss this because what we're about to learn, receive from our papa, is going to be amazing. <laughs> of men. Who told you? Amen. So please register. Amen. Um, also, too, um, we do have fire night at the headquarters this Friday by God's grace, starting at 7 p.m. So please um, do still attend that if you're not. For many, if you're not going to the DMV, but we encourage you to go to the DMV for sure. But there is fire night this Friday at the Stanford is starting at 7 p.m. Amen. Amen. And the next one we have Think Pink 2022. Yeah, yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Hosted by our very own prophetess, uh, our mama, our prophetess Leslie O'Day, on August 11th to the 14th. And to register now at thinkpinkconference.com. Amen. Amen. Um, last but not least, please, if the um, teaching has been a blessing to you, please go and sow into tonight's message. And we'll pray that the Lord will just continue to bless you. Amen. 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 Any last, any other announcements, please? Oh, tune in at 11.59 p.m. tonight for uh, Mindo. We're going in tonight by God's grace. Amen. Amen. Oh, Sunday, we're going in. <laughs> Amen. Sunday, we are meeting back at the headquarters in Stanford, 215 Henry Street, Stanford, Connecticut. So come through, stop by. We'd love to see our virtual families. If you're around the area, we'd love to see you. We'd love to visit, um, see you in person. Um, but if not, please tune in on Facebook and YouTube. Like we stated earlier, please go ahead and subscribe to the Kingdom Full Tabernacle International Ministry YouTube page. And also, to our Papa has his own YouTube page at Apostle Dominic Ose. So please go and subscribe to those two channels. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful night. See you at 11.59. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. God bless you. Thank you for everything. We, we thank you for tonight's teaching. Thank you for your spirit. We thank you for understanding, oh God. Thank you for the knowledge. Thank you for the wisdom, oh God. Father, I we pray as we're still in the month of evangelism, oh God, we pray that you will give us the spirit of the boldness to go out and to share the good news, oh God. That we will not just be evangelists to share because we're comfortable, but Father, may we do it because we want to see souls be saved and brought to your light, oh God. We cover each and every one over here tonight and all those that are watching in the blood of Jesus. We say thank you, Lord. May, may your spirit have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us say the grace. May the, May grace, the grace of our, of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the love of God, God and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful night, everybody. God bless you, brother.
you have the awareness of the light of God in you, listen, your environment has to come under the authority of he who is in me. The Bible says, he that is in me is greater than he is in the world. When you don't know who is in you or whose you are, Chihuahua can call you and you start barking. Why? You don't know what is inside you. Somebody's problem is your business. Somebody's t it's your breakthrough. When you have the awareness of the spirit of God, listen, your environment has to come under the authority of me. The Bible says, He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. When you don't know who in you or whose you are, even a chihuahua can call you and you start barking. Why? Because you don't know what is inside you. Give you glory, Lord. Remedy up there. Hey. 